All right, what is going on everybody? Today we're gonna to be discussing steroids and acute bronchitis. Is there any evidence, is there any reason to be using steroids in the management of acute bronchitis? Now, this is a follow-up question regarding the acute bronchitis lecture that I posted on YouTube a while back. And we're gonna get into her question and then we're gonna go over the data. So she says, I have a couple of questions. What is your opinion on giving a steroid burst to those with a cough? I have seen this done a bunch and seems to knock out that inflammation and bronchospasm that perpetuates that ongoing cough. Is this due to a kind of reactive airway? All right, so we're talking about acute bronchitis here. We're not talking COPD, we're not talking chronic bronchitis, we're talking acute bronchitis that's more than likely due to a viral, to a, uh, to a virus, right? A viral etiology. So here's the thing. When we have acute bronchitis, the cough can last anywhere from two to three weeks, and this is normal. Now, let's do a couple of definitions, right? Just to kind of recap, acute cough means that we have a cough less than three weeks. Subacute cough, we have anything between three and eight weeks. And a chronic cough is going to be anything more than eight weeks, meaning two months, right? So the far majority of patients with acute bronchitis will have a cough for two to three weeks after the infection is cleared. Just because we have a cough does not mean that we continue to have that, um, that infection. What it means is that we might have some type of either inflammation or we might have some type of reactive airway. So we have airway hyperreactivity, right? Now this airway hyperreactivity can last anywhere from five to six weeks, and this can definitely lead to a cough. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when you're discussing options with your patient. Many times I've had patients come into the clinic after a couple of days saying that their cough is not improving, and or saying that their cough persists. The more you question the patients, the more you're gonna realize that the cough is getting better. They just um, worry that the cough hasn't cleared and they assume that because they continue to have a cough, even if it's improved, they worry that they still have an infection and they worry that the antibiotic, if you gave them antibiotic or whatever you decided to give them is not working. So oftentimes you have to ask these questions. Is it improving? Are you coughing the same? Lots of times you'll realize that this is not the case. So there's a couple of options here, right? Usually when we have this, um, this, 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 re this cough post bronchitis, it could be a couple of things that we need to uh, keep in mind. It could be this airway uh, hyperreactivity that we discussed. It could also be post nasal drip. They uh, renamed this term. I don't remember exactly what it's called now, but essentially post nasal drip happens very commonly post bronchitis. Um, so how do we treat post nasal? We're giving intranasal steroids. We can also give um, oral antihistamines, first generation, second generation, but the intranasal steroids are really going to get rid of this inflammation that's happening in the nasal cavity. It's going to get rid of this post-nasal drip. It's the post-nasal drip that then leads to a cough. Very, very common. We can also have cough variant asthma that can often, often be mistaken. How do we treat cough variant asthma? We're going to be giving inhaled glucocorticoids. Lastly, we have something by the name non-asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis. The management here is going to be the same, inhaled uh, glucocorticoids, right? So following this URI, because bronchitis is an upper respiratory infection, right? Most commonly viral in nature, then we're either looking at this cough being secondary to bronchial hyper-responsiveness uh, hyper or from post-nasal drip. Now, if the cough isn't all that bad, the patient has it for a couple of weeks, but it's mild, you don't really need to do anything. It's for the patient that comes in that either the cough persists after three weeks or they're stating that it's affecting their quality of life. So we can consider a couple of things. Like we said, the intranasal steroids, when we're talking about postnasal drip, oral antihistamines, like we said. Now, if we don't have postnasal drip, right, then we have to consider this bronchial hyperreactivity that's secondary to the infection. Now, these are going to be treated with inhaled glucocorticoids. Prednisone, oral steroids, um, you know, the Medrol dose pack, prednisone, it's really overkill. Do they work? They might, right? Um, anecdotally, they work. I've given them to patients. The patients seem to get better. It, I, is it necessary? Probably not. If the patient comes in complaining that they have this very, very intense cough, one, we probably should look at other etiologies if they're not getting better after three weeks. Chest x-ray might be a good idea. Repeat lung exam might be a good idea. Uh, other causes like asthma, GERD, these are all common causes of having chronic cough. 
So it'd be a good idea to look into this. But if everything posts this bronchitis, this bronchial hyperreactivity, then I would say instead of giving oral steroids, then um, a good option would be to do uh, inhaled glucocorticoids, right? So we're thinking, we're looking at things like budesonide, which is the same treatment, same management for those patients with asthma. Now, another option is going to be ipratropium. Ipratropium has also been um, useful in patients with this cough following bronchitis. So I wouldn't necessarily jump to oral steroids. They might be useful, but the adverse reactions associated with uh, prednisone, for example, there's just no need to give it. M most of these patients will improve on their own. Most of these patients are going to improve in a couple of weeks, whether you give medication or not. Like I said, first line, maybe oral glucocorticoids, consider ipratropium as well. So that's my take on whether steroids should be used for acute bronchitis. Interested to hear your thoughts as well. Um, if you like this, please like. Um, this lets me know that I should be putting out more things of this nature. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the podcast. This way you guys continue to get these lectures. This way you guys continue to help me with your feedback. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you and we'll talk soon.